Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Comic Source. I'm your host, Jace. This is a creator-owned spotlight. We're here today to talk about a book on Kickstarter uh, that's currently running its campaign. I have the creative team, Michael Katz and Daryl Banks, joining me. Uh, so, gentlemen, thanks for taking the time. Oh, thanks, uh, for, thanks having. for having us. Yeah, why don't we kick it off, Michael, by uh, letting our listeners know uh, what other work you've done previously, where they might know your name from, uh, why it might sound familiar? Um, well, I've just been doing Kickstarter uh, comics for about uh, three years now. I started doing uh, Riot Earp, which is my ongoing. Um, Daryl did a story for that series. Uh, I did uh, Golden Years with um, art by... Kevin McGuire, Neto Diaz, uh, Keith Champagne, a bunch of others. Uh, I did a sci-fi book called Metalhead, uh, which did really well. Um, that artist, Bruno Diaz, went on to uh, get work for uh, DC and Top Cow and IDW. Yeah, so you've been pretty successful uh, with the Kickstarter model, and I want to I want to get back to that later, but. Uh, let's give Daryl a chance to introduce himself. Some of you listeners probably go, wait, wait Daryl Banks, why does that sound familiar? Yeah, maybe Green Lantern with Ron Mars, maybe you're a big Kyle Rayner fan. Uh, so, yeah, Daryl, uh, big fan. Uh, you're a legend. Uh, and yeah, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Uh, I think the fans that are really on the ground floor of what Strider Nolan Media is doing will be glad that they were, they could say they were with us from the very beginning. Uh, Michael mentioned Riot Earp. This is a the cover looked like for a the graphic novel, and uh, we believe that that horror show will will also be something that they'll be glad they support it. It's doing well so far. We're a little bit past the halfway mark. We're about uh, twenty six hundred and some change out of a five thousand dollar goal, and we're really counting on the fans back in this, and and they will be very glad that they did. Yeah, and as we're recording this, everybody, uh, there's 20 days to go. Uh, if you're listening to a first date, release 19 days to go. So, yeah, uh, really want to get in on the ground floor. I've had a chance to read it; it's fantastic. Uh, and we're gonna we won't we won't spoil. We don't we don't. And I totally could because there's so much here to to, to talk about. Um, but we'll we'll get to some of it. We'll tease you all with some of it. But definitely go check it out. As always, there's a link in the show notes to the to the campaign. Uh, Michael, let me go back to you and. And you mentioned do, having done previous Kickstarters and, and certainly with uh, Riot Earp, as Daryl just showed us, and, you know, a real sense of community that you guys are building, right? Like directly to the readers, not going through a publisher and what have you. Michael, is that part of the reason that you do Kickstarter is to, you know, develop that kind of fan base and, and you know, cut out the middleman and really understand what your readers want and you're able to be reactive and answer questions and, and engage? Well, what I... When I first started doing comics, about yeah, you know, I, I got into it maybe four years ago, and I was planning on doing it the same way everybody else is doing it, which was you know submitting the to, to all, you know all the companies and seeing if somebody would uh, would take the projects on. But uh, I, I've seen a big transition in the way things have been going in the the comics industry, um, and. Yeah, you, you see it with a lot of a uh, lot of companies going out of business because they're just overextending and overspending. And uh, Kickstarter, I think, is the the way of the future uh, in terms of not just getting financing, but getting directly to people who will buy the books. And for you, Daryl, you know, having been uh, in the industry for such a long time, you know, as I mentioned, your fan base, and you kind of got away from it a while. Now, now coming back, you've seen both sides, right? Like you, I, again, I get the sense of community that you're engaging and you're building here on Kickstarter. Much different experience than when you were kind of around the first time, uh, you know, on Green Lantern and whatnot. Is that is that accurate? Well, I mean, before I did work with Green Lantern and DC Comics, I was in the independent you know, in part of the industry for half a decade. And uh, the industry has changed so much, but it, it always changes. There's, there's never a time in comics history where there isn't some sort of change or some sort of alteration. Um, and I think it just evolves and adapts. And I feel that nowadays when we have uh, crowdfunding resources, it really shows you how to better, I think, take the temperature of your fan following or, or lack thereof and how to build. I think with the advent of social media, we can actually uh, directly engage with 
uh, fan interest. And of course, you know, it's it's not one hundred percent because. You know, as we know on social media, sometimes people just want to complain about things yeah. what's wrong with the industry. But you, when you have a, a strong enough concept, and I think if you have the enthusiasm and you've got a, a really good concept, which which we do, um, the, the fans will be there. It's like if, if if you build it, they will come. At least uh, that's that's what we're hoping. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been, yeah, it seems like it's been that way uh, so far with the projects you guys have have done, um, and specifically with this project mike i mean there there there's like in a way this is an homage to something that's really classic uh and i caught it right away i mean you look at the cover you look at uh you know the way the the um the main character looks you know the likeness and what have you so let me ask you michael uh horror show well well first of all why don't you let us know uh, kind of your elevator pitch let the listeners know what it's about and then talk a little bit about your inspiration for the story it's a story set in 1975 uh, about a former uh, well, v- Vietnam vet and former cop who uh, winds up losing his family, kind of losing, you know, himself, moves uh, away to be alone in the northern Minnesota and winds up on a collision course with uh, a real-life monster in a world that is not aware that the supernatural exists. So it's uh, it's a character-driven, action-packed horror story. And for you, Daryl, uh, you know, visually, did did Michael mention some of the things? I mean, no, you know what I'm referring to. Uh, we don't want to spoil it for listeners, but did Michael mention some of those things as you guys were kind of building the story together, or was that something you took from the story and and pulled that uh, inspiration yourself? Talk to me a little bit about that. He, he definitely mentioned it. I think it was a. Uh he really he had me at period piece because it's it's funny i've often struggled with period pieces but i ended up doing them and so now the more i do them i feel like uh it's it's a learning process you know even though i'll celebrate 35 years in the industry but it's still something i'm learning i i did a a a graphic novel a few years ago that took place in world war ii and it was kind of like oh no another period piece but then i like the end result because uh, during a time I was uh, teaching at the Columbus College of Art and Design, I used to tell my students, you, as you grow, you always want to challenge yourself. You don't want to get too comfortable. You want to find something that's going to stretch you and, and, and really motivate you to learn uh, new skill sets. And it was, it was time for me to, to take my own medicine. So uh, <laughs> but with, with Horror Show, it was something it was different because I'm, I'm more known for my superhero action adventure type of thing. And so Michael said, well, we want to, you know, how how would you feel about something that's a little bit maybe outside your wheelhouse? I'm thinking, okay, once again, I'm going to have to apply my own advice that I would give my students to myself. And I I really, honestly, I feel like this is some of my best work. I I feel very strongly about what I was able to do. And, um, you know, I'm always, there's never a time where I'm 100% satisfied with what I do because I think the day that happens that, you know, I will stop growing. But with Horror Show, I feel like uh, there were some uh, creative muscles, I think, that I, I, I felt that I was able to develop. And I hope that that's translating well in the, the story that we were telling. I think yeah. so. I think I think your your muscles got stronger creatively <laughs> as the book goes on, too. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I yeah. like to think. <laughs> I would say, you know, as a longtime fan, I'm very familiar with your, your, you know, classic superhero stuff. And this, it was recognizable as you, but it looked different than the style that you've seen but in a good way you know so much uh emotionality but the action is is still there because you do feel the suspense build as the story goes on which is uh yeah it's just a fantastic story let me go back to you michael uh and talk a little bit about that that pacing and and ramping this up not only is this something a little different um from what daryl's done but but different from other things that you've done before right in terms of really getting out there supernatural and and sort of open ended, like this is a character, the main character here, Ben, that you could come back to, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, I I've done some some prose writing in the past too, and I've done a lot of editing since two thousand two. Um, and I and I've written some horror stuff, you know, prose work, and I actually did a um what i i call it uh, i translating some uh classic 
uh, horror authors into, you know, modern day English to make it easier to, to understand. You're talking like Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft and all. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the genre and I'm a big fan of the genre. But yeah, this is the first horror book that I've done as a comic. Yeah, and again, it, it really hits home uh, because as a lot of the best stories, like the the antagonist, or I won't go so far as to call him a villain. He's obviously a monster, but there's a there's a moment we get to see what he went through um, and and how he got there, and you can kind of empathize with him. But there's also this uh, interesting dichotomy between Ben's loss and what you know the monster the monster's loss. There's there's something they they kind of share. Which is really in- interesting, I-, I thought. So, was that something purposeful, Michael, that you that you put it in the story? Because it it really hit me. I was like, oh man. Uh, no, it wasn't purposeful. It's it's cool that you that you, you caught it. Uh, it just um, it it just happened to be something. Well, I had to to have horror on a lot of different levels in the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's big, broad supernatural horror, and there's small, on a personal scale horrors, and uh, and you know both of these guys went through small personal scale horrors to some extent, you know, although quite different, right? In, in each situation, um, it just happened to uh, to be a, a coincidence that uh, children were involved. Yeah, yeah, it was it was br- it was brutal because I think as a reader you can't help but put yourself in that position, right? And be like, well, what would, what would I do? And that you know, for mm-hmm. both of them, what would I do in that position? When you got the script and you were um, figuring out how to convey this, uh, Daryl, did it hit you? Was it really impactful? You're like, oh man, I honestly I I didn't expect the story of that element we're talking about without spoiling it. See, let me backtrack a little bit. I was uh, the 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 legendary inker artist Terry Austin once told me when you're going through a script, try not to read the whole thing at once until you're ready to sit down and start doing thumbnails. Now I, I actually brought that up to him. He doesn't remember telling me that. I, I definitely <laughs> so I didn't read the whole thing at once. You know I'll I will lay out a few pages. You know read it a few pages, lay those out, do the pages. So I'm like reading the story as I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So there are, you know, there were things that come up. I was like, oh, really? It's kind of like, I'm, I'm thinking, I hope that readers will have the same reaction I did as, as I'm, as I'm working on, you know, it's, it's, but as we discover things about the main characters that it was like, oh, that, that's it. That's interesting. I, I didn't see that coming, you know? Mm-hmm. So hopefully I was able to convey that visually with what the story was put before. Yeah. I, I think you guys both did a fantastic job. Again, it's such a, a fantastic story. So I'll remind everybody, link in the show notes, go and check it out. And we're going to talk about some of the tiers and rewards in just a second. But I also want to remind everybody um, that other than going and backing the book and joining uh, the, the community that, that Michael's built and Daryl's a part of here on Kickstarter, you know, I know times are tough. Maybe it's, this sounds right up your alley. You'd love to to back it, but you just don't have the means right now. The other thing you can do to really help these two gentlemen out is to share it on social media, right? Like the comic yeah. routes are are so crowded and there's so much noise out there on social media and, and what have you. The best thing you can do is share it. Let's get as many eyes and ears on this thing as possible. So people can go and check it out. And if they want to uh, become part of the campaign, they'll, they have the opportunity. Cause that's one of the things about Kickstarter, you know, once it's gone, it's kind of gone. And then, you know, sometimes things blow up that, that were Kickstarters. And then you've, if you want it on eBay, it's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So yeah, now's the time. Get out there, share it on social media, let your comic shop know, uh, let your friends at Read Comics know. Let's get uh, as many eyes uh, and ears on this as possible, like I said. So um, as we mentioned, Michael, uh, at the start, you're about uh, 40% there, a uh, little over 2,600, a little over 40%, 2,600 of 5,000. Uh, what are yeah, some a little of over 50. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, right, actually. We're getting there, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, a little week. over a week, yeah. a little over 50%. So. Yeah, and yeah, and 20 days to yeah. go. So, uh, and we don't, is- and we're, and we don't have not safe for work content, which, you know, is a strike against us, doesn't make it easy. <laughs> so that's, you know, it should be even more impressive that we're, <laughs> we're pulling in the numbers without having a resort to stuff like that. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah, it de- this is definitely for mature for mature readers. Everybody, uh, subject matter and and art and what have you. I mean, it's monsters, so it's kind of what you expect. But uh, Michael, why don't you let people know what what are some of the uh, rewards 
obviously you can get the book, uh, digital yeah. version, print version. Other than that, what are some of the things that are available? Uh, we have a, a variant cover artwork by a gentleman named David Diaz. Uh, and we have uh, what I call the Strider Nolan Sampler, which is you can get uh, four books from my my printing company's back catalog. Uh, each book will be you know worth at least uh, you know ten bucks, so you know you get a quite a you know, good variety. Uh, and, and the best of all is you can get an original piece of artwork from Daryl Banks himself. And yeah, he'll, he'll draw whoever you want. Yeah, and I want to talk about that uh, in just a second, Daryl. But also the retailer uh, uh, tier, right? So if you're a retailer, you're listening. Uh, you can't forget the retailer, right, Michael? Uh, what's uh, what's available in the retailer tier uh, for somebody if they want to put this in their shop? Yeah, that's actually pretty new. Um, I, I just added that a couple days ago. Um, you can get ten copies for a uh, hundred bucks. And uh, and that's you know less than half of the cover price, which is like twenty five something. Um, so you know, as a retailer, you get the to put Daryl Banks's art front and center on your shelves, and you still got you know quite a, a ways to go in terms of markup. Yeah, and that's the other thing. This is not a twenty-page comic. Everybody's, I think, forty-eight pages plus the, the, right. the cover. So, yeah, it's a good, it's a good chunk of story. And although I, I did mention, uh, it seems like you could continue with some of these characters. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it does also feel like a very self-contained story. Um, so, definitely, yeah, it's not doesn't end on a cliffhanger or anything like that. Uh, but Michael mentioned the commissions, uh, and I saw I, I follow you on uh, on social media, Daryl. So I see you have been posting lately some commissions. I, I always just drool; they're so great. Uh, just a little bit about that. Uh, is it something you enjoy doing? Is it sky's the limit? Like, what do you what, what, talk to us a little bit about the commissions? Oh, I, I definitely enjoy doing commissions. It's it's one of those things where between uh, my uh, comics work or my commercial art, you know, uh, it's very similar to the sketches I do at conventions, you know, just being able to uh, kind of show off some of the things that a lot of fans tend to like, you know, but uh, regarding the the tiers that we have for horror show, it, it you know as it may we may have mentioned, it doesn't have to be Strider Nolan themed characters. You know, it could be Green Lantern, it could be Captain America. You know, so uh, it's something I enjoy doing, and hopefully, you know, those that back it and, and uh, they are a part of that tier, that they'll be very happy with whatever you know sketch that they'd like to get scheduled. Yeah, and if and you Daryl says he never gets tired of drawing Green Lantern, no, I don't. <laughs> People think that. I mean, and I get why they would think that, but no, it's it's sort of like there are times I kind of count on it. It's it's like if that's a character I can't do in in a very uh, swift and timely fashion, you know, I don't know what to tell you. you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean, there's some comfort. It's something you know, right? Like, you, right, right. That's that's the whole thing. Yeah. Not, I'm thinking, oh, how do you, how does this character go again? Well, I better know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not having to go look up reference and what have you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I mentioned to everybody, uh, you know, Daryl's been posting some commissions on, on social media lately. Why don't you let everybody know, Daryl, where to follow you if they want to go and check out some of your recent work? I'm on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, uh, and, and I'm on Instagram. You can just, you know, uh, search my name. My uh, X handle is Real Bankster, and on Instagram, I am GL Prime. And I'll put uh, links to the uh, social media in the show notes, everybody. Uh, what about you, Michael? If somebody has questions about the, the campaign or about previous work or what have you, are you active on social media? Is there some place they should they yeah. or can uh, reach out? Twitter. Uh, the, my handle's uh, named after my printing my production company, Strider Nolan 13. And then on Instagram, you can find me just plain old Michael S. Katz 7, I think. <laughs> Okay, again, link in the show notes, everybody, uh, if you're having trouble finding it. So, uh, again, best of luck with the campaign, gentlemen, over halfway there with 20 days to go. So, again, everybody, remember, go check it out. Just, you know, link in the show notes. Take a, take a quick peek. Might be for you, maybe not. But either way, put it on social media, share it with everybody. Uh, let's uh, spread the word. So, as we're winding down here, Michael, anything else you want to share with our listeners? Uh, just that you're going to get quality, uh, you know, front and back. Uh, like you said yourself, you like the story. Uh, and I try to do a, as good a job when it comes to the story, 
when it comes to the art, when it comes to the colors, when it comes to lettering, when it comes to the paper, the book is going to be printed on. Uh, and it's a 48-page story, plus there's going to be a bunch of, you know, making of bonus material in the back of the book. So you're going to get a, a big chunk for your money's worth. Yeah, fantastic. Sounds great. And, you know, there's not not to say you can't do more if you hit some of those stretch goals, right? Like you guys are on pace to, to, oh, yeah. hit, to hit some of those. So uh, hopefully, you know, you'll get there. Uh, what about you, Daryl? Any last thoughts for our listeners as we're winding down? Well, you know, I, hopefully we have a lot of uh, those backing horror shows, the same ones that back Riot Earp. And it's something I never take for granted, especially in this day and age. And I just want to take a moment to thank those who continue to support us and any new supporters that we may have. And the, the main thing is it's, you know, it's something that you'll be glad you, that you were on the ground floor of because there, there will be much more coming soon, hopefully. Yeah, and again, uh, that's one of the great things about Kickstarter. It really uh, kind of establishes this and fosters this sense of community. You know, you have the same people coming back and they feel like, uh, you know, part of the family, so to speak. So, uh, again, gentlemen, best of luck with the project. Uh, I Thank really you. appreciate the time. Thanks, Thanks Jason. And to all you listeners, uh, we appreciate your support as always, and we will talk to you next time.